is a story I just read, a COVID story. In the middle of COVID, there was a younger man in Eretz Israel, a major Talmud Chach, a Choshev younger man. But he was draining Zich with the Chayvis. He was run, running from Peter to pay Paul. He had to pay money. He didn't have any money to pay. He was borrowing from Gemach to Gemach. And he had to marry up his child. He didn't know where he's going to get a fruit in the kiss. You know. So somebody told him, go to Reb Chaim. Ask Reb Chaim what to do. So he goes to Reb Chaim. Reb Chaim says, go to America. So he told him, Reb Chaim, you don't understand. It's COVID now. She said to us. She said, COVID, no one opens doors in America. The people are not opening the doors and they're not giving tzedakah. It's not the time to go. Any ask any mission, look, look, hey, in the middle of COVID, you don't go. People get upset. Shuls get upset. People get upset. It was, it was true. Chaim told him, the fuck is, mach di hishtadlis. He told him, mach di hishtadlis. So you won't come back with anything. Uh, but you made the hishtadlis. Yeah. The problem, this guy didn't speak one word of English. He really didn't know anything about America. It was the first time he was coming to America in his life. But Reb Chaim told Mach the Hishtadlis. So he makes the Hishtadlis. He comes to America. The first shul he walks into, they say, What are you doing here? It's the middle of COVID. You can't dive into the shul. Only certain people can dive into the shul. Okay, goodbye. And he knocks in the guy's house. People look out the window. Don't even open the door for him. One after another. No, he kept on remembering the words from Chaim. The fuchus macht the hishtadlis. After a couple of days, he gets a call from his relatives in America, and they're strong to say, No, if you get this, how's it going in the Golden Medina? He said, It's a finster. It's dark. All the lights are out. It's gefelch. Gefelch. Aber ich mach the hishtadlis. And he asked them, get these people, where, is there any place you could go? They let you in. Them, no, where it's COVID. Where did you come in COVID? No one's coming in COVID. <coughs> and he's getting close to the end of his stay here. And he said, no, I'll go back. And Fraim told me to make the Ishtanus. And he comes to the house. And he hears a big simcha going on in that house. He hears a simcha going on in the house. He figured, it's COVID, they make a big simcha in the house. <laughs> He has music, he has singing, he doesn't know what's going on. He bangs on the door, no one answers. He decided he better bang harder. He starts banging harder. So the music stopped for a minute, and his bang went through the door. They open the door, and there's a bunch of people there. And they say, Come to Hai, come on in. They let him in. They bring him to the head table where the head guy was sitting. The guy was smiling. And the guy says, you know, I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting for you. Ah! Baruch, that you arrived finally. I've been waiting for you for days. Now the guy knows he was waiting for days. I don't know this guy from Mars. The guy gets out his checkbook. And he said, I wrote the check already before for you. He pulls the check out of the checkbook. He says, Nemtai Cook, take a look. The guy looks at it, and his eyes start to fall out of their sockets. But $50,000. Not pennies, not dimes, not nickels, not gold. 50,000 big ones. She still takes the check, he pushes it into the guy's hand. And then this guy says, they must have been waiting for somebody to give him the money because the check was pre-written. I, the guy didn't know me, I didn't plan to come here. And now the guy made a mistake, gave me the wrong check. So should I say something? Should I not say something? She so said, you know what? It's going to be for stats. I'm not going to take money. It's not coming to me. I'm not going to live with myself. It's a lot of money. It's like a, a dream. She ain't come outside. She turns to the guy and he says to the guy, I'm really sorry, but you're mistaken. I'm not the guy you've been waiting for. He said, no, no, you're the guy I've been waiting for. 
Now I know for sure. When you first walked in, I was Musipik. But now I know for sure you're the guy waiting for. He says, how? Because you gave me back the money. Because you gave me back the money, now I know for sure you're the guy waiting for. He said, could you explain what, what does that mean? I said, I'll tell you. I made a business deal a while ago. And I made it with a friend of mine. There was a whole convoluted deal. But eventually the IRS called in the friend. Where'd you get all this money? They saw a large influx of money coming in his account. Where'd you get this money from? So he said, he borrowed the money. The IRS didn't believe him at all. Kids said they called the friend down to come in. The guy got himself a lawyer. And he told the lawyer, I had to look. His lawyer said, maybe it doesn't look so bad. We'll fight it. I mean, truth be you gave him, you'll say you gave him a loan, and you did. You, you gave him your money to pay you back and invested it. Anyway, the guy said, okay. If they're going through a few weeks of biting, nail biting things, they said, we can't prove that anything illegal was done. So we're going to let you go. The guy was in seventh heaven. He was thinking to make a pseudo seda. But before he got a chance to make a pseudo seda, another department came knocking on his door. And this time they wanted this guy to skivir himself. Where'd you get the money from? Uh, did you pay taxes on that money? On the, on the gains that you got? Did you pay taxes on it? He says, yeah, I pay taxes. They eh, started all thing. And it was looking very bad for him. The lawyer said, you're going to have to make up some kind of a compromise. He said, Rabbi Yishol, if you get me out of this thing... The first guy that walks to my door, Rishulach, I'm giving, he thought, how much should I give? 10, 20, 50 big ones. Then afterwards I was mischarit. I said, some Shemaiger is going to walk at my door. Some Loyutzlach guy who's looking for a cup of coffee, who wants to buy some schnapps, who knows what. And he wants to knock him out. I'm getting 50 grand. I said, Barisham, send the right person to my house. Today, I became part of them. <laughs> so I made a suda seda. I had a guy play music. I called my family together to come around. We didn't think anybody's coming. It's COVID. No one came. No one showed up. Then you showed up in the door. He says to the guy, you know what? I am so happy you came. I was waiting for you. And I have no suffix that you're the man. You wanted to give me back the money. You said I made a mistake. You know what? I got a little tip for you. He takes out his checkbook. And he writes out another 50 G's for the guy. <laughs> and he sends the guy on his way. And the guy flew home without a plane. <laughs> <laughs> And the Schlepper Schnorr Deluxe <laughs> ends up with 100,000. <laughs> it's a pella. Now, anybody, I'm sure if they would have asked Dr. Fauci, he would have said, oh, that's terrible advice. I'm sure if you would have asked most of the from doctors in Flatbush, they would have said, that is awful. How could Rabbi Kanievsky say, doesn't he know the dangers? You idiots. You blockheads what you are. You zeros. You're from Fauci's people. I already told you what Fauci means in Italian. Idiot. That's what his mother called him, Fauci. And it's unbelievable. The world follows these stupid people one after another. I'm trying to think if 
half the, the rabbis or rabbanim who, are, who worship the doctors would hear that advice. They would burn Reb Chaim's farm. They would cancel Reb Chaim out of Jewish history. He's a murderer. He's a Rechayach. He sent this young man to burn an American COVID. Chaim said, Gates, Gates. He's a Mr. Stadlis. A Macha Mr. Stadlis. No, that is. It's like not normal. Vini, Yedaiti, Vini, Yedaiti. I know what you know. And I know what you don't begin to know. 